Hi everybody, let's get going with today's video homework. Today we are talking about immigrants and immigration into the United States um, in the late 19th century, mid to late 19th century. Uh, quite a few concepts to look at today. Um, who are the new immigrants? What are the push and pull factors that create large number of immigrants entering the United States? The similarities and differences between Ellis and Angel Island, we'll hear about both of those briefly. Um, what are the living conditions that immigrants face when they get here? Um, what is the role of the immigrant um, in industrialization? And how are the Americans that already live in this country um, in the later, um, in the second half of the 19th century, how did, what do they think of these immigrants? Okay, those are today's concepts. Key vocab for today, I'll point out the melting pot. Uh, think to yourself if you've maybe heard that term before. And nativism, we're going to find out nativism is a backlash against this immigration that's happening. But let's get to the new immigrants right away. Uh, immigration is, simply put, it's the idea of um, one person uh, or a group of people from one country moving into another country and planning on staying there permanently. That's immigration. Okay? And there are, any time you have this happen, there are going to be push factors and pull factors that have a uh, have a someone, a person, or a group of people doing this. Um, a push factor is a reason why a, a person no longer wants to remain in the country they are in, and a pull factor is something that's intriguing or interesting or something they want to take advantage of in the country they are going to. They're being pulled toward that country. Okay. Um, as far as push factors are concerned in the um, uh, the immigration happens in the second half of the 19th uh, century, there are many different uh, reasons. Uh, religious persecution could be uh, some of it. Uh, with the Irish potato famine, we see that uh, lack of food, uh, poor soil is a reason why um, people are leaving their country. Uh, those are push factors. And there are lots more uh, economic reasons, uh, and, and the list goes on. Pull factors in the second half of the 19th century, pull factors range anywhere from, uh, again, that economic freedom. Um, opportunity is a really big one for immigrants um, coming into, this, into the country of the United States. Okay. Um, new immigrants into the United States. I don't know how well you can read the chart on the right of the screen, but um, th the dates here are from 1820 to 1880, and we're actually looking at a period longer than that. But you can see, uh, you know, even though this country, the United States, was founded by the English. At this time, the English are not the main immigrant group. Uh, because of the Irish potato famine, um, we're going to see a lot of people from Ireland uh, make their way into um, the United States, but also Germany, a lot of other um, European uh, people from European populations, uh, countries that is, they are making their way into the United States at this time. That's the European side. We're also going to get some immigration, or this country is going to get some immigration from across the Pacific Ocean in Asia, okay? primarily Japan and China. That's where we're going to see also an influx of immigrants. Immigrants, when they make their way into the United States, they're going to end up very often at one of two places. The most two most famous immigration stations are Ellis Island, which is located on the East Coast once you cross the Atlantic, and the second one is Angel Island on the West Coast, located in San Francisco. Know where these two are located because depending on which immigration station you go to, it determines really where you're coming from, where you're uh, emigrating from in, elsewhere in the world. 
Okay. Um, they both ser serve the same purpose. The idea for these immigration stations is to check in, uh, be examined, be checked for uh, if you're a felon or a criminal, if you're able to work, and once you've made it through the process, you then enter into the United States and you have to work to survive. Okay. However, there is a big difference between Ellis Island and Angel Island, and simply put, Angel Island is a much harsher experience than what is um, experienced at Ellis Island. Uh, the, the questioning is harsher, the physical examinations are more incriminating, um, it's dirtier, it's filthier, the experience is much worse overall than it is at Ellis Island. Okay, well, and we'll look more into that later. Once immigrants are in the United States, they basically need to find a way to survive, get a job, find a living situation. And many immigrants, since there are so many coming from uh, the same parts of the world, uh, they end up flocking with their ethnic groups. Okay, so a lot of Irish end up coming together. Germans are going to um, seek out other German immigrants in the United States and live with them. Okay, so this idea of a melting pot where you have all these different ethnic groups coming into one country and sharing an American culture just really doesn't exist. They are keeping languages, traditions, customs alive by being with their own immigrant group. And because of that, um, a lot of these immigrants are going to end up in not only the cities where the industrial work is, um, but they are going to end up living in ghettos because a lot of the immigrants are exploited by businesses. They don't make a lot of money. Um, the living conditions that they are in, uh, many live in tenements, which are these really crowded, squeezed together apartment buildings. Um, and the apartments themselves are very small and they're trying to fit whole families in there. The, the conditions that they live in and not to mention work in, which we'll get to later, are very, very poor. It's poor all around. This occurrence of immigrants taking jobs or getting jobs and then keeping their own customs and languages and traditions alive, it creates a backlash for those that are have been living in the United States. And we see that in the form of something called nativism. Um, this anger toward immigrants who many feel are taking jobs from Americans and preventing Americans from getting work. We still hear about this today. Nativism does take on quite a few forms, including um, anti-immigrant dissent in the KKK, for example. But another area where we see anti-immigrant sentiment is with the Chinese Exclusion Act. And Essentially, what you have here is the Chinese who are coming in across the Pacific and landing on the West Coast. Uh, they are a group of people who at this time is working for lower pay. And now many of the people, Americans, who are already on the West Coast, the fear is that they are going to take the jobs that would otherwise go to them. Why? Because they're going to take less pay. Again, it's about survival. Okay? So the Chinese Exclusion Act comes around and the whole point of it is to basically ban Chinese, more Chinese, from coming into the United States. Okay? This is supposed to help jobs. Okay, this eventually does get turned uh, over, but this goes to show that China, that anti-immigrant sentiment that is all across the nation. Be sure to take a look at this cartoon and be able to understand it and explain it. You will need to be able to do this. Um, down the road, and I'll talk about it with uh, talk about it with you all in class. That's it for today. See you tomorrow.